Hi everyone, it's Dawn with Traveling in Peru. We have been offering loads of content all about Peru for the last 20 years. And now we actually provide loads of travel packages. So if you're planning to make a trip to Peru, please check out our link in the description to choose the best package for you. So today I'm going to show you some things to consider packing if you're coming to Peru, especially if you're coming to the Inca Trail. So again, these are just things to consider. Of course you'll need your toiletries, your underwear, all of those things, but these are just things to consider adding. All right, so let's start out with clothing. So clothing is gonna be a big topic because we have different seasons in Peru. So here in Lima, it can be very cold during the Inca Trail season, which is winter time. And so when you come to Lima, you want to make sure that you actually have some warm clothes to go around your everyday. I am from Canada and I was so surprised when I came to Lima for the first time during winter season and I was really cold. Of course, just a sweater was good enough, but it's gonna be colder than you might expect it to be. And then once you get to Cusco, the season is gonna be very dry and so during the day it's gonna be very hot, but at night it's gonna be very chilly. So I'm gonna get you some clothing ideas to have you prepared. So let's start with pants. So with pants, you want to make sure that you have something that's very comfortable and loose fitting for hiking especially. If you're gonna be traveling around and walking around in other areas of Peru, like little towns, you can by all means wear whatever you want. But when it comes to hiking, definitely have some khakis. Khakis are great. Some of them look funny, but that's okay. You get the khakis. The ones with the zip off legs are even better. For women, you can have a pair of leggings. I love hiking in leggings, but if you are planning to hike in many different treks in Peru, I would caution you with leggings because they are really tight to your skin and you can get lots of little thrustles and everything, little needles that can get stuck to your pants. So if you don't wanna get scratched up, try to find something that's more loose fitting and appropriate for hiking. Now. For lounging after your hiking and even sleeping, I would recommend a pair of sweatpants. You can have yours thicker than mine. These are fine for me, but I like these ones because they're very packable. I can fold them up really small into my backpack, but do have something that has a nice layer, a cozy layer for you after you're done hiking to lounge and again for sleeping. So a pair of sweats is a really good idea. All right, also whenever you're packing for a hike, if you're an avid hiker, you would know this. Make sure you're thinking in layers. So when you're packing in layers, make sure that everything you have is very thin and breathable. This is a Lululemon t-shirt that I love to hike in. It's very breathable, very thin, protects me in, from the sun as well. But for an additional layer, I would recommend maybe a loose, loosely fitted button down shirt this will protect you from the really strong Indian sun and it's also very easy to put on and put off, wrap it around your waist, whatever. So this is a really great thing to have on hand. And then if you're just getting a little bit chilly at night, just think of adding another long sleeve layer and then you should be nice and warm. You can, when I go hiking or if I'm doing any work in the field because I'm an archeologist, if I have maybe two of these, one of these and one of these all in the night, then I am nice and cozy. So I don't need to bring a huge parka with me to sleep in the night in the winter, but if I have lots of layers like these, then I will be nice and warm. All right, and another thing to consider is bringing some kind of fleece. This is not the warmest fleece, but for myself, this works just fine. You can find something warmer. Um, again, just like sweatpants, consider something that is easily packable. That's why I prefer this one because I can fold it very small and fit in my backpack. And this is just a bonus, but I find that through all, all of my travels and hiking in the mountains, this is my favorite thing to pack. It is a scarf. You can actually wrap it around you like a blanket. You can wrap it around your neck, wrap it on your whole body, whatever. And it has buttons, so for the ladies, you can make it as fashionable as you want it to be. But it's really nice for airplanes, but also when you're hiking or just lounging in the night, especially camping, it's a nice little addition to have. Of course, totally optional, but do consider it. All right, so let's talk about hiking boots. So these are my hiking boots that I use 
when I'm doing excavations in archaeology. Now, these would not be so necessary if you're only going to do the Inca Trail. I would only recommend something like these if you're going to do multiple treks in Peru. The nice thing about these is that they are waterproof and it has a high ankle. And so it has a high ankle because there's, again, lots of bushes, lots of things to scrape you on your ankle, so this will protect from that. And so they're great if you're going to do many multiple treks in Peru. However, if you're only going to do the Inca Trail, it's actually a really well-maintained trail, so you wouldn't have to worry about all those things that could scrape your ankles. So you could consider having something much more lightweight, um, a hiking shoe rather than just boots, um, and then it'll be easier to pack if you're gonna see other places in Peru. But if you're planning to bring giant boots like these, then for the plane, I would definitely recommend going on the plane with them to save some space in your pack. So now let's talk about flip-flops. So flip-flops are great for if you're gonna be in a hostel or having a communal shower, especially on the South Kantai or the Inca Trail, you will have communal showers, and so having a pair of flip-flops would be very comfortable for that. Um, otherwise, if you're planning to walk in them, that's probably just a bad idea because lots of towns in Peru have lots of cobblestone, so they probably won't be the most comfortable for you. But if you're looking for a good day shoe, any kind of sandal with a back strap would probably be the best for support. Um, or even just like a pair of Toms or anything with a Toe protector is a good idea too, but definitely keep the flip-flops for showers and if you're just not gonna be going too far. All right, so in the Andes, there's a really high chance that you could encounter some rain. Um, in the dry season, it's, it's still possible, but what I'd recommend is bring a poncho. Even the plastic ones are totally fine. This one's my favorite one. It's from Eddie Bauer. I got 10 years ago, and you can just pack it up into this little ball, but just have a packable raincoat on hand and have it in your day pack, and then you'll be good to go. So this is what mine looks like. Very simple, and that's all you need or even just a plastic one. So I highly recommend bringing a really good day pack, something that's small and not bulky, um, so that you can just do have just your daily things in it. All you really need for it is just like your water bottle and a few other things, your camera and whatnot. Um, keep it lightweight because then it'd be nice and packable so that you can fit it in with the rest of your luggage. Um, this one packs into itself. Um, this one's from Eddie Bauer, but anything small and compact is the way to go for a day pack. All right, so if you're planning to have a big backpack, which is likely if you're going to do lots of treks in Peru, uh, you don't need anything too huge. This one is a 55 liter from Osprey, and it does the job just fine. When you're looking for a backpack, if you don't have one already, I would just recommend find one that has lots of pockets, lots of zippers. Like, there's so many things you could fit into this tiny little pocket here and have everything just like in its own space. So when I was doing the Inca Trail, I would keep my laundry in this bottom one and some, and like pack my shoes like right above it. And then in the middle, I actually decided to save all of this room for just a sleeping bag because I get cold at night. And then over here, I would have my toiletries and my clothes. So I clearly chose not to pack lots of clothes with me um, but you can decide how to choose yours. But again, when you're, when you're choosing a backpack, just make sure you have something with lots of compartments. All right, let's talk about water bottles. So if you're gonna be doing lots of hikes in Peru, it's not really necessary to even pack a ginormous double insulated water bottle like this. This is just an example. I would not personally carry this with me just because it takes up so much space. But if that was what works for you, go for it. An alternative if you need lots of water is just to buy one of those camelbacks with the straws that can come up close to you in your, from your backpack. Um, otherwise, just a daily water bottle, like something like these would be fine. This one I find for myself is actually a little too small because it's double insulated, um, so it doesn't fit so much water, but something like this is perfect, something mid-size. I think it's very smart. All right, so I'm just gonna talk about some little extra clothing bits that you can consider when packing for your trip to Peru. If you're coming in the winter time, it's nice to have a little toque or a beanie, however you want to call it, for the night to keep your head warm. And also some mitts are really great too, especially for early mornings. And for socks, 
I have these amazing socks from Canada. I got them at Canadian Tire. I don't know what an equivalent would be in the States or elsewhere, but these are good for minus 20 degrees Celsius. And as you can see, they're very thin, they're cotton, and they can roll up really nice and tight. So if you're able to find something like this at your store, then I would highly recommend bringing a few of them. And for a buff, this is totally optional, but one of my favorite things I love to hike with, and I don't leave my house without it if I'm going hiking, it's a buff. And so what you can do with it is you can keep it around your neck, protect your neck from the sun, keep, protect your ears from the sun, have it on your head, you can do whatever you want with it. But the best thing to do after a long day of hiking is dipping it in water and when it's nice and cold and putting it on your forehead. <laughs> That's the, my favorite thing to do. So consider it, but it's not necessary if you don't want to bring one. So on the topic of medicine, I would highly recommend that you first talk to your doctor about what they might prescribe you, especially if it's your first time coming to Peru. Definitely see what the doctor recommends um, for your shots. Um, as for altitude, it can be really difficult and it's totally different for every single person. For myself, I used to never be affected and then as I got older, I need to have my own painkillers um, to help with altitude sickness, so I myself bring Advil pills. Um, but for you, it might be a little bit different. So again, talk to your doctor. There are altitude sickness pills. You can even get them here in Lima. Um, or alternatively, there's coca leaves that are very common in the local areas. And so you can get a bag of coca leaves and try those to help. But whatever the case may be, definitely consider talking to your doctor first. All right, so as you're gonna be traveling, you will have to carry probably some cash on you, some other sensitive things like your passport. I like to carry this. This is actually a running belt for your keys, but it actually works just as well to put in a little bit of cash or whatever I need. And I can, it's so thin that I could easily put it underneath my shirt. Um, also, great thing to consider if you're traveling anywhere, not just Peru. And so, a little running belt. All right, so let's talk about headlamps. Now, this is a very bulky headlamp and it is totally not necessary if you're coming to Peru. But I have this because I was in the Amazon and I needed it in the jungle at night and also I need it when I'm doing excavations in the mountains. But if you're just going to the Inca Trail, having your flashlight on your phone, if you have enough battery, totally fine. You could bring a little flashlight, maybe just a small one if you plan on bringing one. Um, if you have a headlamp, great, but probably you, want, you will want to choose something less bulkier than this guy. As for electronics, you'll probably need your phone, you'll probably want to have a nice camera if that's your hobby, um, but just bring everything you need for those accessories. But one thing to consider for sure is bringing a adapter. For Peru, the voltage is 220, and so definitely have something that will convert your appliances or your electronics. As for battery, definitely bring a portable battery charger. Something slimmer is great because then you don't have to carry so much with you or like have it be too bulky with your things. Um, but yeah, just make sure you have converter, portable to charger. All right, this is totally optional, but I personally love bringing this on all of my travels and it's an inflatable neck pillow. And the reason why I love it is, of course, it packs down really easily, but even when I'm camping, I use this as a nice extra little pillow for myself. Um, also, like you can use it in the plane, of course, but when you're done with it, you just deflate it, pack it back into this little pouch, and you are good to go. So inflatable neck pillow. And the last thing I'm gonna mention is the sun and bugs. So, there are so many bugs that you might encounter as you are hiking and trekking and whatnot. Um, so definitely bring some bug spray. But otherwise, the sun in the Andes is actually very powerful. So bring some sunglasses, bring a baseball cap, anything to protect yourself. Definitely bring lots of sunscreen. Like if you are having a cooler day in the, in the Andes, sometimes you forget to reapply and that sun is actually very severe. There are so many times where I was with students up in the field, in the mountains, in the high Andes, and lots of people would forget to bring sunscreen or just wear it in general and they would be so badly burnt even though it felt like a cloudy day. So definitely consider that the Andes mountains have very powerful sunlight. So definitely bring your sunscreen. 
Another little bonus to consider are wipes or baby wipes, especially if you're going to be hiking for multiple days. Um, showers are not so ex easily accessible, and so just wipe down with some wipes. It's nice to carry some. You can even buy them here in Peru when you get here. All right, so this is our list of things to consider bringing to Peru. Of course, we're not saying that you should bring all of these things, just some things to consider. And while you're packing for your own trip to Peru, also consider making sure that you don't bring things that you probably don't need. Always think packable. All right, so if you like this list or if there's anything that you would also suggest bringing, definitely leave it in a comment down below. Someone I'm sure will find it useful. And also be sure to like and subscribe. It will really help our channel out. And please be sure to follow all of our socials. We're on Facebook, we're on Instagram, all those things. Also, if you're planning your trip to Peru and need some assistance, please check out our travel deals and discounts that we have going on right now in the link in our description. And we also have special deals specifically for the Inca Trail. So if you want to go to the Inca Trail and you need help planning it, definitely check out one of our discounted prices for the Inca Trail this year. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> Hi everyone, it's Dawn. Oh no, we need you again. <laughs> Hi everyone, it's Dawn with Traveling in Peru. We have been, been blah, blah, oh God, okay, again. <laughs> All right, off. <laughs> I think I need to redo that. <laughs>